Thanks for watching another episode of The Ordinary Fisherman. We're going to be up north chasing panfish for a tournament and trying to find some of the big croppers and bluegills that some of these lakes can produce. So stay tuned for some good panfish action. And please be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the videos, and hit the notifications so that you'll know when we're on our next adventure. Let's go find some panfish. I'm out here once again in the Isabella area to chase panfish specifically this time. I have entered a, a tournament that's put on by Panfish Pirate. It's for anybody who wants to enter in North America. So there's lots of people to compete against there. I'll put a, an icon up to show you the, the tournament. You can sign up if you like. It's through the Fish Donkey app. I'll also put an icon up so you can see what that app looks like. So if you'd like to join, and compete against the ordinary fishermen along with some other pan fishermen uh, by all means do that the the tournament runs through the beginning of november so by the time this video is out you'll still have plenty of time to fish and get on the board and maybe even pass up some pan fisherman who's already there so the goal today is to fish the mcdougall lake which i had mentioned in my other isabella video and abandon for another lake there's good pan fish numbers in this lake i have a couple hours to uh, see if i can get some some bluegill specifically, and hopefully some bigger bluegill. My family is getting ready to do a last hurrah on Lake Vermilion, so I'm going to spend a handful of days up there over the weekend, and I might be able to sneak out to another panfish lake. If I do get out there, I'll probably include that footage on this video as well. So let's fish a tournament and see what we can find, and of course, have lots of fun. I'm always excited about panfish. that pretty holy smokes nice and orange I've never been here before so you just kind of look around and see lots of, of rice in this lake it looks like so I'm kind of fishing uh, along the edges of the of the rice that's thick and cut this in lily pads and rice so uh, maybe we're on to something we'll see we we'll measure it we poured it Put it on the board. We've got a nice eight and a quarter. It's a good way to start. Feels like a good deal. Oh my. This is why I came up here. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited right now. Another training chair. Ten and a quarter. Ten and a quarter. Yeah. I'm beginning to think that you're good luck. That's what I'm beginning to think. So this ties my Minnesota best. Ten and a quarter is the, the best I've caught in Minnesota. I've now tied it. This summer I've now caught two over ten inches, which brings it to six total. Nice one, another nice one. Not a 10 incher, but definitely the nine inch range. All right. All right. So I didn't come up here expecting to get numbers, but I did hope based on the information I was looking at on the DNR website that I would find size and that's exactly what I'm finding so what a way to start this tournament with some uh, nine inch and the ten and a quarter incher we'll measure this one see what we got beautiful nine and a half mm. nine and a half incher on the board here we go Look at this. Look at this. 
Oh, special appearance. <laughs> that was a special appearance by a beautiful walleye. So the the funny part about that is is that was in four feet of water on the edge of the weeds. And it was on this little fly jig that I use for panfish. How about that, huh? Love it. Lots of fun. I thought for sure that was a bluegill. For sure. Ah, darn it. So much for that slow-mo. <laughs> Not sure I'm going to be able to get this big boy in. It's a big bass. Holy smokes. Whoa. <laughs> I need to get the net. Definitely need to get the net. Do I have a chance? If I can get him close to the boat, I got a chance. I don't know where he's hooked, but with this little jig, this little jig is holding on. It is holding on. Come on, big boy. Come on, big boy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. hooked with that little jig right in the corner of his mouth. Holy smokes. Oh man. I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm absolutely shaking. That little jig must have been right in front of his face and he just couldn't help it. 19, 19 and three quarter on ultra light four pound test and little fly jig you know it's only a 30 second ounce fly jig man so we got ourselves a 10 and a quarter inch bluegill 12 ish inch walleye not impressive almost 20 inch smallmouth bass and i didn't put it on camera but i caught a northern too talk about an awesome day I'm gonna end my day one of the tournament with this. I gotta get going and meet up with the family. But in a couple days, I'll be able to do day two and I'm gonna hit one of my local Ely favorites, uh, One Pine Lake. It's got some good uh, crappies and bluegills in there and we'll see what happens. We'll have some fun with that, so. Day one in the books, baby. Oh, what a blast. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. While we're getting going here on day two of the tournament, I'm going to a lake south of Ely uh, called One Pine. And, uh, you know, we're up here at Lake Vermilion for a long weekend, kind of ending the summer on a strong note. and. I only had one chance to get over there and it's a sloppy raining morning. I had every intention of getting up early and heading over to the lake, but um, it's here it's 1030 and it's still raining. So I'm trying to time my trip to get there when the rain stops. Um, I'm not afraid of the rain, but um, I haven't had a good way of getting the camera equipment from getting wet and still get footage and the sound seems to get mucked up when when it's uh, all wet. So 
as is always the case with ordinary fishermen, you, you take the days that you have and the time that you have, you make the most of it. And that's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna try to put some good pan fish on the board. And today we're gonna do it in style. My boat is still in the lake on Lake Vermilion. And so my father-in-law is gracious enough to, to lend me his for the morning. So I'm gonna be in his nice uh, alumina craft today and gonna actually look like I, I know what I'm doing. So as always, I'm excited. Uh, this lake's got some decent sized panfish in it. We're gonna see if we can get a few on the board. And um, as always, have a good time. Let's, uh, let's see what day two of the tourney has to offer. Settled here on one pine. I've actually caught a couple of, of panfish already and nothing of size worth turning the video on for. But that crappie finally got on here. First real size crappie to enter. So we're gonna have a little fun here in one pine for a couple hours. You can see that the sun is finally out and it's cleared up a little bit so I don't have to be out in the rain. And uh, we'll see what we can put on the board. Good start though, good start. So I had to make a, a decision here and decide to settle on the calmer side of the lake. And sometimes you just gotta do the best you can with what you have and, and it's just really windy and hard for boat control. And so I'm gonna putz around here. I, I might have found where some crappies are. Um, we'll see, I'll find out here as I hit the spot a little bit more and see if I can find some more. But I don't know if I get some more 10 inch crappies, that's a, that's a good, it's a good size to start getting on the board. We'll see what happens. Give it some more time. So I'm having fun with a bunch of crappies here, but nothing of super big size. But my hunch on um, where the crappies are was correct. There's a, there's a type of weed I'm very familiar with, but I've never ever associated it with panfish. Um, and that's because I've never really caught get panfish around them. And yet that's where these panfish are they're around this one particular weed and um, they're in their numbers so you know not the not the size I came to this lake for but fun nonetheless enjoying ourselves oh this wind is a bear it's a bear it's a bear absolute bear I'm trying to stay off of this spot and not scare the fish away and the wind isn't letting me. The wind taint letting me. <laughs> and I'm casting into the wind because the best boat control is facing the wind and I ay 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 this school of crappies must just kind of be moving around this uh, weed bed because I feel like I'm kind of chasing them. Get bit on one side and then they're not there and then I move around to the other side and they're there like that. <laughs> it's, it's another one of the little seven inchers I've been catching, darn it. <laughs> it's fun though. <laughs> you gotta register it. Pulled out a nice crappie. Still not the size that I'd like to see in this lake. But, you know, anytime you get out and fish is fine. Not complaining at all. Good times. 
It's another great fishing outing in the books. The plan was to hit two lakes in a few days. McDougal Lake and Isabella area, one time lake here in the Ely area. They're both lakes that have decent panfish in it. As you saw when we started off the episode with that 10 and a quarter inch bluegill. That is a tie for my personal best here in Minnesota. That was really exciting. And then here up in Ely, I had hoped to, to get into some bigger crappies and maybe get into some decent bluegill. It just ended up being about average size. You know, I got knocked around with the wind quite a bit today and it was just really hard to hit some of the areas that I wanted to hit on this lake. And so I had to settle. And settling got me some action, but it gave me fish to put on the board for this fishing tournament. You know, if you want to participate in this tournament, it goes until November uh, 2020. There's four different categories to fish in. There's the bluegill, crappie, yellow perch, and rock bass. And uh, your entry fee allows you to enter any of those four categories. It's lots of fun if you love to pan fish like me. And if you have a competitive bone, then it gives you a little extra incentive to go out and try to find those bigger fish. Again, you can find that tournament through the Fish Donkey app and it's put on by Panfish Pirate. He also has a Facebook page. You can put Panfish Pirate in the search engine on Facebook and it'll come right up. And uh, there's more information about who he is and, and uh, the tournament there. Thanks for joining me on this episode. It's been a good time. I love panfish, so anytime I can get out and fish for panfish is my happy place. So I've been happy, happy, happy the past few days. You know, I appreciate your support this summer as I've uh, slowly grown and learned more and more about uh, about how to edit and put a story together. And y'all have been very patient with me. I appreciate that. If you like what you're watching, please subscribe to the channel. It is very helpful and encouraging to know that uh, people like the content. And also be sure to like episodes and hit the notification bell as well. That isn't just to let you know when we're out in our next adventure. It also lets YouTube know that there's people interested in our channel and that helps the exposure um, get out there so that more people can find it. And if you really like what you're watching, I'd appreciate it if you threw it out there on your favorite social media page as well. So be sure to come back and visit the next time we have an episode. Thanks for watching this one. I'm Nathaniel, just your ordinary fisherman. Remember to take a kid out with you fishing the next time you get out and share with them the great resources we have at our fingertips. And remember, there's always a fish biting somewhere. All you gotta do is go out and find them. I'm Nathaniel, just your ordinary fisherman, up here chasing panfish in beautiful northern Minnesota. God bless and tight lines. Thank you.